Now, the other thing I was wanting to do here, as far as measuring, is I kind of wanted to <clears throat> go through and just start picking out some various measuring tools we've got here. We're talking about measuring. What, what do we got? How does this work? How does that work? Feeler gauges. Feeler gauges. Very basic tool. Normally you see a set like this, you stack them up to different thicknesses. What I do, which really has worked out good, is I put a bunch of these of the same size together. I've taken a whole bunch of sets, torn them apart. I've also got some 12 inch feeler gauges. The advantage to this is you are adjusting something and you wanna make sure you get it square. So you can take these off the holders and you can put four of them around on a plate and get it set in there square while you're adjusting stuff without having to, uh, to accurately shim it or hold it somewhere, just a temporary shimming. Having multiples of those in sets is a good, uh, good thing to do. Not, and you can also, again, measure with these. You can stack up, get a measurement, see what does fit in somewhere and what doesn't. And in between those two gives you the number of how open the space is. Which that also brings to mind another thing here. Back to our telescoping gauges. We measure with our telescoping gauges. Like I said, probably, well, I want this to go quick for people. I might slow down so I don't make myself too nervous, like I'm starting to get in my, uh, my shorts, <laughs> my shorts mode yet. Okay, if we want to measure in between these T-slots accurately, you come in here, and it's not, on this, it's not just pulling through once. You have to pull through, and you have to just keep wiggling it all around, which I didn't get it locked good. You want to keep wiggling it around until you just barely feel it at one spot. If you feel it at any more than one little spot, you wiggle it a little bit more. And it won't go in too far on a flat surface as long as you're not specifically pushing a lot one way or the other. It will float and it won't push it in too far. But that's what you need to do for using telescoping gauges for measuring slots. Uh, basic angle gauges, radius gauges, radius gauges. And with the angle gauges, besides the magnetic ones, there's electronic ones, and these cheapies are kind of handy here. You can come up with all kinds of different numbers, and they don't cost much. They go, go around in a circle. Radius gauges. These are real nice. If you want to measure a radius or cut something to match a radius, having these, you have the shape, you can write it a little bit, check it, see if it's right. The whole trick with these is I is light. You'll hold up what you're trying to measure, and if there's any gap between the two, you'll see a light gap in between them. And then you know that that's not the size or you have to change it. Now, the gauges will normally come in relatively coarse sizes for some things, but uh, you, you just guess and say, well, that's what it is, unless you have a reason for it to be a exact re radius, and then it's probably the mating part which is going to be easier to measure, most likely. Um, sometimes you would have a call out that, uh, that might be ludicrous also. Um, they make these in inch, they make these in metric. Um, they're handy to have some of. Um, we looked at some of the bigger pin gauges before. Here's some smaller ones. And the thing with pins, pin gauges, they make them in plus and minus. So if you're using a plus pin gauge, they're slightly bigger than the size that they're listed. If they're a minus, they're slightly smaller. And you use these trying one size and then the next one to figure out what size the hole is. And uh, it may not tell you exactly, but it'll, it'll get you within a couple thousands. Dial bore gauges. This is one of those tools for where you're using the uh, ring gauge, like I was talking about for setting. And the way this one is, you've got different... These, this one only has a two contact point. So this one... These are stabilizing rollers to help you get it centered in the bore that you're measuring. And then uh, this one here will push on the indicator. Screws up. Put that in. Okay. Anyway, the indicator will move with the movement here. 
you've got different length stylus points that you put on so that it works in different ranges. And then you set that for zero at a known diameter. Then what you can do, which is really handy, and this is really good if you're doing precision engine blocks, you can go up and down the engine block and you can see the size if there's any variance as you're looking at the bore in it. You can turn it 90 degrees, 30 degrees, and look at it. It's just really quick instead of having to measure everything with a micrometer or a uh, caliper inside, uh, whatever. That's just gives you a quick way to look at all of it. Um, I bought, it's a three-point contact. And all of this comes back to practice. And we're working on top of a mic box right there. It's just a 6 to 12 set. But this one here is a multi-contact unit and it's contacts there let's see that one's reading no i guess this actually does just use two points and that's part of the helping to center it these two are helping center against the other ones because these are spring loaded on this but they're not measuring then this one's doing the measuring <coughs> but i had a whole bunch of um Pretty close size, uh, there were some suspension components that bushings were supposed to go into that I needed to measure many of them. A surface gauge, it's not all there. Uh, you put this along a precision surface and you can put an indicator in here just like an indicator stand or you can put a, a point on here. It's really common you'll just put a point on here and make a scribe at a given site um, just another type of a stand basically. let me see oh these are cool too this one was a little flaky last time I used it so that's right sir ultrasonic thickness gauges these are pretty neat they send out an ultrasonic uh, wave uh, I can turn that one on it makes numbers and you have a wait for it to come up you have a pad on here usually, or you have a separate piece for checking if it's measuring the right, uh, right thickness for the pad that's on the machine. And then you can go ahead. This one uh, is, I honestly don't know, and I'm not going to spend the time here as far as what it's calibrated and set up for. This one I sort of dislike because it always reads in metric. Yes, nine millimeters. Um, it's definitely set up for some kind of steel because it's close to what we got there on that uh, straight edge. But they're real handy. Um, don't use them every day, but they are handy. And yeah, that's another one there that I brought for backup. This one is an old US made one, German, I forget. Uh, 